Hi everyone, today I am going to start the third part, that is the last part of chapter 1, that is evaporation. So evaporation is almost same as the boiling, that is boiling take place at all the temperatures. We already studied in part 2, that is boiling of a liquid, liquid state converting into glacial state by absorbing heat energy, is called boiling. The same way here also evaporation is, it is a process by which liquid changes to vapor. Okay, liquid changes to vapor. In case of boiling also liquid changes to vapor. Evaporation also liquid is changing to vapor. That is called evaporation. But there is a small difference between evaporation and boiling. In case of evaporation, this evaporation will take place in all temperature. For example, if I just pour some liquid over here, within no time it will get evaporated. But you cannot see the water is boiling, after that it is getting converting to liquid. Yes. So, evaporation will take place at all temperatures. Right now, here the temperature is around 28 degree. So, at 28 degree, when I pour some liquid on it, on the table surface within one or two minutes or maximum you can see five minutes that water will get evaporated so this evaporation and boiling the basic thing is same that is liquid is changing to vapor liquid converting to vapor that is evaporation boiling also liquid liquid changes to vapor but there are four difference first difference is Evaporation takes place at all temperature. Okay. So, evaporation takes place at all temperature. Second difference is, it is a slow process. You know why boiling takes place. You can see all the bubbles are coming up. All of a sudden, once the water reaches 100 degree, all of a sudden, the entire water starts changing to gas. But evaporation, when you see some liquid on the floor, after 5 or 6 minutes, gradually it will evaporate. So, it is a slow process. Boiling is a rapid or fast process. And the third one is, it takes place only at the surface. If you are placing a bucket of water, the water will evaporate only from the surface. That is top layer. Water will evaporate from the top layer. But in case of boiling, if you are taking one glass of water or one beaker of water, when we give temperature, once the entire water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the water starts boiling throughout the liquid. It will not take place only from the surface. It is a, it will take place from throughout the liquid. But in case of evaporation, it will take place only from the surface. And the last point is, it produces cooling effect. That is, when I am just placing an ice cube. Suppose this is an ice cube. It's too hot right now. So, in uh, near to me when I place an uh, ice cube, you can see this ice cube, wait, you just imagine this is an ice cube. I know this is a class, but you just imagine this ice cube. This ice cube starts melting. Do you know why this ice cube is melting? How? That is, this ice cube will absorb heat energy from the surrounding. Just now I told the room temperature is around 28 degree. So this ice cube when it absorbs the heat energy, the 28 degree of this temp, this room gradually decreases to 27 or 26. So what will happen? The temperature, when the temperature of the room reduces, we will get a cooling effect. Instead of the small ice cube, if I am placing a huge ice block, you can see it will absorb a lot of heat energy from the surrounding. So, by absorbing heat energy, the temperature of the surrounding will decrease, which will produce a cooling effect. Okay, so these are the four differences between evaporation and boiling. Evaporation is also a process of change from liquid to vapor state by absorbing heat energy. But, there is four different things we have to study. Evaporation takes place at all temperature. It does not require a particular fixed temperature like boiling point of water is 100 degree. So, it will take place in all the temperature. 
that is a slower process it takes place only at the surface evaporation takes place from the surface and it produces cooling effect so these are the four difference between evaporation and boiling so if you are asked to differentiate you can say it takes place at all the temperature in case of boiling at dry it takes place from a fixed temperature then second one it is a slow process for boiling you may write it is a rapid process or fast process fourth one it takes place only at the surface it takes place from the entire liquid and the last one it produces cooling effect but did you feel any cooling effect when the water is boiling when you stand near a boiling water it produces a heating effect so these are the four difference between evaporation and boiling vaporization vaporization of boiling now rate of evaporation depends on five factors rate of evaporation evaporation means rate of evaporation means at what rate it take place so first one it is it take place on the temperature of the liquid suppose i am taking a glass of water it is around uh, 90 degree celsius temperature of the water in this glass is 90 degree and i am taking one more glass and the temperature of the water is around 50 degree okay one is around 90 degree one is around 20 degree let it be 20 degree when i just pour this water to the surface to the floor you can see all which one will get evaporate faster obviously it will be of 90 degree that is if the temperature of the liquid is small evaporation rate of evaporation rate how much it will get evaporated evaporated within a particular time within a fixed time rate so it depends on temperature of the liquid more the temperature more will be the rate of evaporation first factor okay more temperature of the liquid more will be the rate of evaporation second factor is area of exposed the surface if we want to dry the clothes we used to spread it if i want to dry the shirt i used to spread it then only it will get dry faster then i'm just holding folding this cloth like this that means area of the exposed surface if the area is small the rate of evaporation will be also more another example is used to have your uh, tea you have the cup and saucer so if the tea is too hot what we used to do we will just pour the tea to the saucer so the area of the exposed surface will be more so the evaporation will be more so the tea or coffee will get cooled faster that is called area of the exposed surface so you just imagine the example of cup and saucer to Uh, uh, increase the rate of evaporation to make the tea cool faster we will pour the tea to the saucer so that the area of the tea exposed to the air will get increase so the rate of evaporation it will get cool faster so that is the second case with example area of the exposed surface more area of the exposed surface more will be the rate of evaporation third one nature of the liquid we have different kinds of liquid we already told about only about the water but we have different kinds of liquid for example we have kerosene petroleum spirit alcohol or different way different liquids so each liquid will evaporate in a different way if you place a glass of water a okay, cup of water and if you just place a cup of spirit which one will get evaporate faster obviously it is clear the spirit will evaporate faster that kind of liquids are termed as volatile liquids that is the rate of evaporation is much more than our normal water at the same time if you just kept open a kerosene bottle or a petroleum bottle it will evaporate at a faster rate than our normal water water honey i don't think honey and all will get evaporate faster water also it will get evaporate but 
it will not be at the rate of this petroleum, spirit, alcohol, kerosene and all. So, rate of evaporation depends on nature of the liquid. Volatile liquids evaporate at a faster rate than a normal liquids. Example of volatile liquids is spirit, kerosene, petroleum. So, that kind of liquid which have a greatest rate of evaporation is known as volatile liquids. So, that is the third factor, nature of liquid. And the fourth one is flow of air. Again, you can say the same example of cup and saucer. When we pour uh, tea, hot tea to the saucer, the area exposed will be more. Along with that, we used to just blow air to it. Or if you have a hot coffee, if you want to drink it fast, what we will do, we will just blow air. Then what will happen? You know, the rate of evaporation will be fast. That is why the coffee is getting cool fast. <coughs> cool. <coughs> okay. So, the rate of evaporation depends on flow of air. Or you can say, I will show you some other example like uh, during rainy season or during winter season. In which season our breath, our dress or our clothes will get dry faster. It is obviously this clear. It is during the winter season. Because in winter season, what will happen? There is a flow of air. And that air will help to increase the rate of evaporation. As compared to the monsoon season or rainy season. So, it depends. The fourth factor is flow of air. And the last one is presence of humidity. Again coming to the summer season and monsoon season. In summer season it is dry air and in monsoon season the atmosphere will be full of what atmosphere will be full of water molecules. So due to rain, rainy season, the atmosphere will be full of water molecules. That means the humidity of the air will be more. So will you get your dresses dry faster in monsoon? No, because rate of evaporation is less in monsoon because of the presence of humidity but in summer it is dry so the clothes will dry up faster so these are the five factors on which rate of evaporation how fast or how slow the evaporation take place first one temperature of the liquid second one area of exposed surface third one nature of the liquid that is volatile liquid fourth one flow of air and the last one is presence of humidity now the last topic from this chapter is we have four application application of evaporation already we told about we often pour tea in saucer that is one application it is used to by pouring tea hot tea to the saucer the rate of evaporation will be more and the tea will get cooled faster second one is um, doctors advise to put strips of wet clothes when you are suffering from fever or you need of doctor and all if your parents or mother is good enough they use if you are suffering from high fever they will take a small strip of cloth and they used to uh, place it over our forehead or if you are having high fever doctor will advise to wipe our entire body with water wet cloth so what is happening there is when we wipe our entire body if you are suppose we have the Normal body temperature is 37. If we have more than 38 degree, we used to say that we have high fever. So, when we wipe our body with a wet, wet clothes, so you can see that the water will be stick on our body and this water will get evaporated by absorbing heat energy of our body. Okay, this water, when I put some water on my hand, you can see, you can see that water will get evaporated by absorbing heat energy from my body. This is, that is why if we have fever, if we have around 38 degrees Celsius, the temperature of our body will be reduced for evaporating the water. Or if we kept the wet strip on, on our forehead, what will happen? That wet strip, that water will get evaporated by absorbing our body's temperature. So, our body temperature will reduce 
that means our fever will reduce i am not saying it will not reduce and uh, uh, we don't want to take some uh, medicine we should take the medicine along with that we have to do this okay so that is the second application of rate of evaporation and third one is evaporation of sweat that is here you can see when you stand in a hot sun and right now i'm sweating the sweat here we will get the sweat the different parts will get the sweat that sweat will get evaporated after when we are when we go and sit somewhere gradually if you are not wiping it out gradually this sweat will get evaporated by absorbing the temperature from our body so what will happen the temperature of our body will reduce and we will get a small cooling effect and the last application is in summer we used to pour water in the earthen pots earthen pot means kuja did you see kuja made of this mud and or clay and or not mud clay so we used to pour water in the earthen pots what is the purpose of using this earthen pots the reason is that when we pour water in the earthen pots in summer this water have a particular temperature let's imagine the temperature of the water is 20 degrees celsius in the earthen pot there will be small pores it is not a steel or aluminum or iron earthen pot will have a small pores so the water will sweep out through the pores and that water will get evaporated by absorbing the temperature temperature of the water that water will sweep out through the pore and will get evaporated for evaporation from where will the water take the temperature it will absorb the temperature of the water inside by absorbing the water temperature of the water the sweep of small droplets of water will get evaporated so the water inside the earthen pot the temperature will reduce so we will get almost cool water inside the earthen pot so these are the four examples of applications of evaporation by this i am concluding this chapter one matter by this three videos this is the third video so thank you all of you please go through all the videos and write down the notes you don't want to write the notes since you don't have the text book you just write the notes in the rough book and i already given you all the question answers printed question answers those question answers only you should write in the notes okay thank you